Hey everyone, welcome back. And in this video, I want to talk about Cloud Code, which is easily one of my favorite CLI tools for doing AI programming alongside Cursor and alongside, you know, any of the IDE, whatever your preferences for the IDE. And in this video, I want to spend a little bit of time showing you guys how to use cloud code in general or how do i use it because if you see i've created this one video where i share about top 10 tips that i have for using ai in general it goes over this practice where you know i'm mentioning that you should use a cli tool like cloud code or open code alongside your ide ai editor right but how do you actually do that so in this video i want to show you how i use these tools today in my own workflow and maybe you can take away a few tips right so what's going to happen over here first of all you obviously have to have some work that you need to do right so this is example of one of the tickets one of the work that we can try to do with cloud code and ai in general and before we actually get into this what i would also want to do is probably show you about this work or this ticket in general so this ticket says that add a text Text field in assignment submission. A client has requested to change where users or students can see a text field alongside file upload, right? So to give you a context, give you a little bit of more context about this issue, what this issue is, is basically that Fermion, which is the platform that I run, Fermion is basically an edtech platform, right? It's a platform that supports one of the offerings as LMS, as an AI powered LMS. Now, in this case, we have a feature where people can create courses over here and inside courses you can create assignments right where people can upload stuff and you can set a due date and so on so if i show you inside syllabus for example let's say i add something and let's say i add an assignment over here and if i publish this for example and i open this you will see that this is basically the same screen which is there in the issue right so what we want to provide is the instructor to have some sort of ability to also be able to accept input file input text input as one of the things right so first of all i have to define it very clearly in terms of requirement what that what is the end output that i want all right so once this is done you would understand and you would realize that this is a both a front end and a back end change why because the front end has to be updated according to like what the ticket is and the back end needs to have the schema updated or whatever the end product is right so also let me show you how this works from a user point of view so let's say if i open this course as a student and let's say if i enroll in this uh, let's say if I open this assignment, you will see that I have a input area over here, which allows me to just drag and drop my files over here. And you know, just that would that the assignment would be submitted in this case, but we want this to be customizable in a way that we want people to be also able to accept certain input as a assignment value, right? Also, if we look into internally, like how this configuration is enabled, disabled, and how this is managed, you will see that this more or less follows this configuration block over here, right? I would not get into details of how things are exactly working, but what you can understand is the backend returns this configuration type and there it could have, you know, allowed uploading extensions, multiple file uploads and so on and so forth. And on the backend, you can see that this is how the configuration is actually stored, right? The Zord configuration schema, which is stored over here. Before I give Claude the ability to start messing around with this, what I would do as a developer, because now I am aware about how this configuration is stored, I would make the configuration change myself because generally you would see, I don't know if you have observed this or not, but these AI tools are not very good in discriminated union based configurations, right? They get confused a lot and they will just create top level scope keys and so on. So what I will do is I will do the first level configuration thing on my own and then I would let it take over. So first things first, I'll just add a new configuration should allow text input submission and I'll add this as a boolean and then just like we have for uploading configuration we will have text input config over here which can be an array or it can be just an object the first thing could be like a field fields which is an array of something like label and then type could be you know just text or url for example to start off with right so this just allows us to have some sort of validation in place if we need and remember because again this is a sensitive change and this is how the thing is that this since the schema and this configuration already exists in our code base i know that because i'm adding this as a def as, as a new thing it must have defaults otherwise this configuration would fail this is again this is where the developer mode come into picture so you have to do an initial little bit of work before you get started with ai itself 
itself and I can put a default over here of fields to be an empty object, right? And while we are at it, I will also just throw in a should allow file uploads as a thing as well. You see that we already have should allow multiple file uploads, but we don't have should allow file uploads. And the reason we need that is because there is a use case where somebody would just want only text based submissions, right? In that case, the user might just want to disable file uploads completely, which will result in not this UI, but a different UI. Now, this is part of the equation. The other thing is that the submission itself. So you see the second schema, which is there assignment submission config schema, which is where we store the configuration itself of, you know, the user. And over here, we have to introduce a new field, which is let's say text input data. And this could be an array of objects, which would be, let's say question would be a string for now, right? I mean, we probably would have to extend this later if you're supporting things like numbers and so on. But let's say for the sake of clarity for now, because anyway, these are CSV exportable things, right? So people can export this. So question and answer both have to be a string for now, right? And just like earlier, we also have to give it a default here because this would be existing in any initial existing submission. So we don't want to break that. All right. So now once we have configured and done a little bit of work on our own as a developer, now it's time for AI to kick into picture, right? So I'll just go ahead. I'll go inside the directory and I'll start Claude. Now I can do it from either of these directories. Let me just zoom in Claude code a little bit so that you guys can actually see it in the video, right? So how this works, the reason I can just go into backend and start it is because if you look into add directory, in my case, I have added both backend and front right and in cursor I've opened this as a workspace so one of the things that you should do is just add directory of all the things that you're supposed to all the directories you're supposed to be working with now the next thing is I'll shift it into plan mode with shift plus tab and I'll write a detailed prompt all right so I think this prompt is good enough where I am just asking it that you need to support text-based submissions for assignment added in course items in Fermion if you look at I mentioned the file itself so that it's easier for it to start picking up I have given it a context that I have added already some of these things you need to make backend resolvers basically how you would tell a human another human who does not have a lot of context but it can figure it out once you have given it a job right so that's all I gave it that you have to look at the backend resolvers where this is getting used and you have to update those things you have to update the student view which I already showed you guys so they get proper UI I can probably if I go back over here I can add maybe like a front end or something over here you know inside front end repo update the instructor view on the assignment creation flow so they get an they can create any number of questions, which is what we want. And finally update the submissions view. So there is a third view, which I did not show you, which is the submissions view, which is this show all submissions. So as submissions keep on rolling in, you will see that this page will start to fill up, right? With the right set of submissions and so on. So that's it. That's all you have to do in general. Like I think that that is a good first prompt and you have to make sure that this is in plan mode and you have to just hit enter and let it work. Now let it work in the background. We'll come back after it has done a little bit of planning. All right, so you can see that it will ask you some questions. Meanwhile, should text input submissions work alongside file uploads or should assignments support either files or text inputs? So in this case, I would want it. Um, it should be configurable by admin itself because see, we already have the options, right? So if is true, then it should have text inputs. And if this is true, then it should also have file inputs, right? Then for review display, it's asking me a UI question, right? So I just added my own custom response over here. Should instructors be able to edit reorder text input questions after the assignment is created? Yes, you can make that possible because in submissions schema, we anyway store the question and answer again. So even if the question gets changed, deleted, it would not affect past submissions, right? So that is why it's important that you make these calls on your own. First of all, first calls on your own. Required validations we would want and yes, let's sum it for now. For the validation questions I asked earlier, should students be required to answer all the text input? Yes. 
all the inputs for now. All right, so once it's come up with a plan, you have to review this plan. This is the most important part because you might feel a little lazy and you might want to skip this, but this is the most important thing. So you should review what it is saying you, right? So it will ask you the implementation plan. So the first step it says that it's gonna use a pre-signed URL endpoint, which is right in a way, but the endpoint name is now wrong. So I would just ask it to update the API endpoint or maybe I'll just do that later myself. That's not an issue. Then it says on the modify assignment, I will add something add question and so on so this looks fine and for course item assignment component it will do the same thing and then finally on the review page it will do the same thing as well so this looks fine i'll just let it work All right, so you can see right now AI is running linter, which is the type checker basically, type, type checker and ESLint. It, it has found some errors, it's doing its own feedback loop, but it has been well over 14 minutes, right? So it's 15 minutes of time. So you can't possibly be sitting around and just watching it do that. You must do something else, right? Because not even if not AI being slow, this TSC software and generally like compilation and stuff like that is slower in nature. So I'm assuming that this is the end of it. It would not have any errors at least but what i try to do at this point is i would open up cursor and i'll go to the source control view and i'll start to see the changes it has made right so i'll start to see into what changes it has made and i can't go ahead and i can't read this because this is just impossible to read therefore i have to do those changes or i have to make the code review process happen inside an editor so starting with the modify assignments file which is the course item thing right which is uh, supposed to be there so it imposes a bunch of these components let me just close the other tabs then it does create this option this area of where you know file upload should be allowed or not and looks like the configuration is not synchronized the types at least so i'll just reload typescript over here and it creates a ui which looks fine which the code at least looks fine then it has this should allow file uploads if this is true then it renders this area and then this has this new area of allow text submissions if it's enabled again it will render it and it has this nice empty text fields and so on and so forth so overall i mean i've not done a deeper code inspection but on a higher level code this looks fine right because it's following exactly the same practices which existed already in the code base then we have a bunch of more files course item this is what the user the end user sees so here also it's trying to see if the user is already submitting just automatically return it removed this files.length check because now we can have submissions which are just purely text-based submissions as well right so it's doing a bunch of validation over here it's doing a bunch of early returns which i'm not a huge fan of but that's fine for now let's just not be too bothered by this then it does a sort of like a submission which is a wrong name right now but let's just rename this later manually then over here you can see that it's trying to extract out text input data from the submission object itself but it's not able to see that because of the types are not properly synchronized between backend and front end so that is something that claude is already doing in the background it's trying to run it it's trying to figure out what's going on and we'll just assume that okay this at some point it will be fine type wise so moving forward like it just displays you all the text answers right in the submission page itself and then it has a bunch of more things over here and this is finally the view which is supposed to render the submission uh, the area for text-based inputs right so overall generally the code base over here also looks fine very much inspired from the practices that already existed in the code that's why it's faster to review coming to back inside of things you can see that it, it has already started following the practices that we had already mentioned in the schema itself so it has created the schema of objects as well in the API response type and it's updating this based on the errors that it's getting in the CLI continuously right and this is obviously the work that we did initially right so this is the only thing that I did personally before handing it off to, to Claude and then everything else was done by Claude well while Claude is fixing this in the background because most of the things are now just type errors on that page we can actually try it out right so I have this local build running I'll just create let's say a section inside this course and I will add this assignment over here 
let's say I just do it questions right or just url of your video interview let's say we just create this as an assignment i will allow file uploads allow multiple submissions i will not allow that i will allow text based submissions and you can see it has automatically created this nice little ui and i'll just add it youtube link let's say for now as a url right and i'll just save this assignment so this works first of all when i refresh this view and when i open this again you will see that we also get the data back right so this is also verification that the thing at least is synchronized with the database and then finally if i go and preview this as a student let me also publish this course so it's already published yeah so one thing which i just immediately realized is that this restrict type of files that user can upload should be part of the UI only if allow file uploads is enabled, right? Otherwise it does not make a lot of sense to show this. So this is something I'll just tell Claude later, but I'll just enroll in this course and I'll walk you through how this looks like on the user side, right? So once I open the course now, hopefully I should see in the assignment that we have only text-based input now because that is all that is all we enabled. And yep, that is how it looks like. So it just asks me that I have to fill a YouTube link URL over here. And if I give it, for example, I mean, obviously it's just a URL validation. If I give it Google and then submit it, you can see that the assignment got submitted and that is it. So this successfully displays, does everything that is it's supposed to do. And if I refresh this, you are seeing that this is also working. On the other side, if I go and see it in all submissions tab now, let's see how that looks like. So you can see it's broken a little bit. You can see like, obviously this is not how it's supposed to look like, but it somewhat works, right? Because otherwise this was an area where it was supposed to show the files that were supposed to download. But now it shows me the link, the question and the answer. Very cool. If you think about it, it's not a 15, 20 minute work. I mean, as a new developer, but for me, I mean, I'm obviously creating this video, but if I'm doing this without a video itself, it just takes me five or maybe 10 minutes of time to set up the initial context and set up the prompt. And then I can just go away. Right. And while I am doing this, I'll just also probably add on to these prompts see it has completed its work so i'll just add on to these prompts that you know restrict this should be displayed only if file uploads is enabled right and i can make make this the first item and i can also just let it know that you know the review assignment page submission page looks a bit weird maybe make the ui a bit better on that page overall i can just point it out and i'll just let it do its work now at this point i would not switch it to planning mode right so you also have to figure out when do you want to switch it to planning versus uh, you know just let it do its job you i the reason i did not made it make it switch to planning is because there's there's already context set into its memory right it has already worked on a lot of these files it has worked for like 25 minutes of time on this so it already knows about everything that I have just mentioned, right? It, it knows like what the string is. It has probably seen it somewhere when it was scanning files. So it's in its memory. You don't need that. Technically speaking, this PR is ready to go, right? I can just go ahead and create like two PRs, one on front end, one on back end. I can merge this and I can close this ticket, which estimated to be like, what, an hour, a two, two hour ticket, maybe maximum. But personally for me as a developer, I did not spend a lot of this time. So I could use the other time while Claude was working for 20, 25 minutes on this i could be using it for writing the next ticket prompt or i could be using it for you know learning something new or maybe just going on a walk or doing anything that is why these ai systems are so powerful but understand that the way i started the issue itself is by defining some things ahead of time right some things before i let claude take up now this is not true for every issue for some issues i will just you know go ahead and let claude do it job do its job from the very starting but this was a specific issue which required a bit of initial work done by me, right? So this is Claude Sonnet 4.5 model. I am sure that Claude Opus operates a lot better than this as well. And similarly, like all top of the end models like Gemini 3 Pro is now there as well. Don't use Claude with free models or, you know, with the other one, I forgot its name, the lower one than Opus or uh, Sonnet because they are very bad models and they will just make you scream. So that's all for this one. If you like this, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I will see you in the next video very soon.